Hello and welcome everyone to this industrial machine design train. Today we are going to see how to professionally draft a spindle. What do you mean by a spindle? A spindle or a shaft is a mechanical component responsible for producing the necessary torque and rotation. We can see a spindle in a wide range of industrial applications. As in case of machine tools, we can see from conventional lathe to CNC's and also mining industries and agriculture industries and so on. This is a vital component and today we are going to see how to professionally apply the dimensions and tolerances based on the international standards. Before going into the topic, I want to make sure that my units of dimensions are going to be in mm and all my tolerances are going to be in microns. And as an engineer, I would suggest you all to never ever forget this 1 mm equal to 1000 microns. Many of us would have been knowing this, but just a gentle reminder. Here I have projected the front view of the spindle and a keyway portion here at the end of the spindle. It is not necessary that you follow the same kind of orientation. You can also go for cross-sectional views in case there is a bore or any internal elements present. Let us get straight into the topic. The first and foremost thing I would suggest you all to do is to generate an axis line. Every cylindrical object and a whole bizarre should contain an axis line. Why? Because most of my tolerances are going to be dependent on this axis line. It is the first and foremost thing and the basic thing you have to follow. Firstly, we are going to generate the diametrical dimensions, then the linear dimensions with the necessary tolerances and surface finishes. Concentrating on this portion of the spindle. So this portion of the spindle is going to be connected to the power source by means of a coupling or a bell drive or even a chain drive or a gear train also. Let us dimension this area first. I am giving a 60 mm diametrical value. Don't be worried about the value which I am giving. It is dependent on the application and varies from application to application. And I am also going to generate a tolerance based on the fit of this portion. I am going to generate some close fit here. H7 fit. You can see H7 fit as a minus 30 micron tolerance. Coming to this portion of the spindle. This portion of the spindle is a key area where my pairing arrangement is going to be seated. For better understanding, let me show a bearing arrangement which I have generated previously. You can see here, I have used two angular contact ball bearings, a spacer and two lock nuts to lock these two bearings with a certain amount of preload. This is how a typical bearing arrangement will look alike. Dimensioning this portion of the spindle, let us assume we are using an 80 mm ID angular contact ball bearing. In this case, I am going to give a very very close tolerance of 3 micron. We should keep in mind that how much ever we reduce the tolerance value or manufacturing cost is going to go high but in these cases you should never ever compromise. Dimensioning this threaded area you can see how I have represented the threaded area you can also hatch and show for better representation. So this threaded area is going to carry the two log nuts. So we are going to use a standard M80 into two lock nut. So we are going to generate a M80 thread in this portion. Coming to this stepped area, so this stepped area is a critical value so we have to keep in mind. So the diameter of this step should always be more than the OD of the inner race of the bearing. So the bearing will have inner race and outer race. So the diameter of this step should always be more than the OD of the inner race of the bearing. You can see how I have selected 89. Coming to this portion of the spindle, again this area is going to carry a bearing arrangement as like previous. You can see how I have generated the bearing arrangement. Maybe a triplet arrangement in this case, two bearings, a spacer in between, another bearing and two lock nuts to lock these bearings with a certain amount of preload. So dimensioning this area, let us assume we are going to use a 100 mm ID angular contact ball bearing. Same like previous, I am going to give a very very close tolerance since it is a bearing carrying phase. So I am going to give a plus or minus 3 micron tolerance. And dimensioning this threaded portion, so let us assume we are going to use a M100 into 2 standard lock nut. So I have generated a M100 thread in this area. Coming to this stepped dimension, as I said before, so the diameter of this step should be always more or equal to the OD of the inner race of the bearing. You can see how we have selected 112. Concentrating on this portion of the spindle where the spindle nose is going to be connected or maybe a chuck. 
That's why I have generated tab drills here. We'll see the dimensioning of these tab drills later. Now coming to the linear dimensions. So I'm going to generate the linear dimensions for each and every step. Let me hide the bearing arrangement. You have to dimension the threaded portion also. It is must that you don't forget this. Coming to this step, this portion, and finally this portion. And here again, there's a threaded portion. This must that you dimension the threaded portion also. And the overall dimension of the spindle also I am giving. So based on the DIN ISO standard, I am going to give a open tolerance in this case. It is not necessary, but just for uh, you to understand that there are standards available. So for the overall dimension, I am giving plus or minus O2 open tolerance. We have uh, almost given all the dimensions. So the dimension left here is the keyway. Now we are going to dimension this keyway. The keyway dimension is also based on standards and we cannot give our own dimension. You can see how I am referencing this book, design data book for all my tolerances. In this case, I am going to generate the dimension for this keyway. You can see how to dimension a keyway based on the standards. I am going to use a 14 by 8 parallel key. So the same case and the depth of the keyway to be 5 mm. This is the symbol of depth. So the length of the keyway is understandable. So it is 80 mm. I am not going to give that value again here. Now we are going to dimension the tab drills. You can see how a typical tab drill is being formed in the industry. These tab drills are also based on the standards and we cannot give our own dimensions. So it is based on the drill and tab sizes available in the industry. Let us see how to dimension this tab drill. So based on the standards, I'm going to generate the dimensional value for this tab drill. You can see M10 is the typical size designation of the drill and 1.5 is the pitch of the tab. And uh, I'm going to locate four number of tab drills at a PCD of 86 mm. The depth of the tab drill I have given 25 mm. This is how we typically dimension a tab drill. Okay, we have applied all the necessary dimensions for the spindle with accurate dimensional tolerances. The next step what we are going to do is to generate the geometrical tolerances based on standards. Before going into the geometrical tolerance, I want to make sure I am fixing my datums precisely. So what do you mean by datum? A datum is a zero or the starting point from where all my dimensions and tolerances are going to be referenced. In our case, I would suggest you all to make the bearing carrying regions as your datum. You can see here, I am referencing this portion of my spindle as my primary reference and this portion of my spindle as my secondary reference or datum B. So this is a symbol of datum as per ASME standard. Now we are going to apply the geometrical tolerances. I am going to start from this portion. I am going to indicate to my manufacturer to maintain the circularity of that portion to be around 3 microns and the cylindricity of that portion to be around 4 microns. Okay. Coming to this area here, so the side face of my bearing is going to be against this step here. I can show you with the bearing arrangement. I am enabling the bearing arrangement. You can see here the side face of my bearing is against this step. So it is must that you maintain the perpendicularity of this step. So my next tolerance is going to be perpendicularity. I am going to indicate to my manufacturer to maintain the perpendicularity of that step to be 4 microns with respect to datum A. Let me hide the bearing arrangement. Okay. Next thing we are going to apply the geometrical tolerance to this region. Same like before, I am going to indicate to my manufacturer to maintain the circularity of that region to be around 1 3 microns and the cylindricity of that region to be around 4 microns and the next thing I am going to maintain the concentricity of that region to be around 5 microns 
with respect to datum A. It is must that we maintain the concentricity of each and every step with precise tolerances to ensure that there is no eccentricity in my spindle. Coming to this region, again same like before, the side face of my bearing is going to be against this step. You can see from the bearing arrangement. So the side face of the bearing is against this step and we should also maintain the perpendicularity of that step. I am going to indicate to my manufacturer to maintain the perpendicularity of the stepped portion to be around 1.4 microns with respect to datum B. Okay, we have generated all the necessary geometrical tolerances for the spindle. It is not mandatory to follow the same kind of tolerancing. You can also go for circular runouts and total runouts. But this is enough and feasible for a spindle to be manufactured precisely. The final step what we are going to do is to generate the surface finishes for the accurate fit of the each and every component of the spindle. I am going to start giving my surface finish from this face. I am going to generate a 0.4 micron surface finish to this region based on my fit. And here again a 0.4 micron surface finish to this face, this face and this face again and the end of the spindle where my spindle nose or my chuck is going to be connected. It is not logical to generate such close surface finishes to non-critical areas. It is enough that we mention the surface finish of the non-critical areas outside nearer to the title block. Okay, we have come to the end of this video. So this is how we professionally draft a spindle based on standards. In future classes, we will be learning more on those standards which I used to select these kind of tolerances and values. And we will also be learning about the material selection, the heat treatment processes and so on. Hope you have understood and gained some knowledge from this video. Kindly keep in touch for future advanced machine design training. Thank you.